how to not get screwed by Forex brokers, and also some common practices for selecting a broker, how to use a broker, how it all works. This is really going to be an overly simplified video because I don't want you just so much confusing stuff. I want you to be able to just, you know, if you're getting into trading, trying to find a broker, this video will help you, hopefully. Now, let's go ahead and get started. How to not get screwed by Forex brokers brought to you by Nick Shaw, not financial advice. Now, listen, first and foremost, trading is risky. You're probably going to lose all your money. You shouldn't listen to me. I'm just some bald dude yelling at you on the internet. Most people are going to lose money. You will lose money. Don't trade. Just leave this video. So see you later. Hope you have a great rest of the day. That's the video, guys. For those of you who are crazy enough to stay, let's actually get into it here. All right. So a Forex broker, it's a financial institution that enables individuals to trade currencies in the Forex market. Forex brokers act as intermediaries between traders and the interbank where global currencies are traded. This is like a fancy way of saying a broker is like the person or company that when you place a trade, the broker is supposed to take that trade that you that you placed and then send it to the market and then you will make or lose money and the broker makes a little commission as, as a facilitator of that transaction. That's all they are. It's a very, very simple process. So, how to find a broker. It's real simple. You're going to need a flashlight, rope, and a chainsaw. And in some cases, you may need some fish bait and a lantern. But that's all beside the point. I'm just I'm screwing around. I'm just effing with you. You don't need any of that. How to actually find a Forex broker. Super complicated. You're going to use this thing called Google. You're going to go to Google. You're going to type in list of best Forex brokers. I know. If I've already lost you, I know. It's really complicated. You're going to go type in best list of best Forex brokers. And then what's going to come up is a bunch of different results. And you're just going to go to various review websites to find brokers. So you can type in, like if you're in the USA, for example, list of best Forex brokers in the United States or list of best Forex brokers for US residents. You know, a number of things. You can kind of tweak it. And then just go find out what different brokers exist and how they're reviewed. There's a lot of brokers that will get a lot of crap reviews because typically a lot of the times the only people who leave reviews are people who had a bad experience, which kind of sucks. But, you know, you could get a lot. You can gather a lot about a company by just reading a bunch of reviews in random locations on the Internet. So go to the various brokers' websites that you find and they just take literally 60 seconds to see what leverage they offer, what their fee structures and pricing are, and whether or not they accept people from your location and their account types, etc. And you, you have to really try. You have to give 2% of it and actually try to do some research and work to find out what broker is going to work for you. There's a lot of brokers. There's a lot of brokers that will work with people in their specific situations depending on where you're at geographically, uh, your income, your experience level. Forex brokers, it's like a whole hell hole of a bunch of different things but you know fortunately you got this video to kind of break it down for you that's how you find a forex broker now should you do regulated brokers or not nah? so regulated brokers are great and they provide peace of mind like you know like they can go to jail if you know they got regulatory authorities overseeing their operations and if they steal your money or do something stupid you can complain with them to regulators regulators will step in and say hey what the hell little timmy over here is mad he says that you didn't give him his money and the brokers are like oh i'm sorry and they'll pay your money so you don't really have to worry too much that's really good peace of mind however here's the downside you get abysmally low leverage typically it's like 1 to 50 or in some cases 1 to 30 or 1 to 20 yeah, I know, 1 to 20 leverage. In the FX market where you got currencies moving sometimes like a quarter of a percent per day, that's like, I mean, not having leverage is like, it's, it's you know, try spending $100,000 on a trade to then make like 200 bucks. Congratulations for you. So you typically want leverage. A lot of regulated brokers just don't have that high of leverage. They also have higher spreads. The distance between the bid and the ask prices are really high. So you end up getting... Sometimes, you know, a little bit shittier entries because <laughs> of the high spreads. They also are notorious for having higher fees. A lot of Forex brokers, it'll be $5 in and out. So $10 in total uh, to enter one standard lot. So, I mean, like if you, let's say you en you enter a five standard lot buy on EURUSD and then like immediately you close it, you have lost like $50 just on that because it's $10 total in and out just on one, on five standard lots. It, it's really trash, you know, it's kind of, it's high commissions, but you know, luckily it's not always the case, it's just with regulated brokers. You also have first in, first out rules, you have anti-hedging laws where you can't hedge, and then every now and then you get annoying calls every week from your broker trying to get you to deposit more. It's cool, like they're just playing the game, they're trying to be like, yo, hey, Timmy, we, we want to, uh, you know, we like you and you're cool, and how's everything going, Timmy? Hey, you want to deposit another $100,000 with us? Yeah, you have to deal with that with a regulated broker, which is cool, they're good, it's good customer service and all. Just saying, you know, as halfway as a joke, halfway as it's sort of annoying every now and then. I mean, of course, you can always just block their number and 
and not answer calls from them. I don't know. You do whatever the hell you want to do. Now, some good regulated brokers are Forex.com, Oanda, and IG. I have used Forex.com and Oanda. They are both great brokers. They have great customer service. Everything is perfectly fine. It's just you can't hedge. There's the FIFO thing, which makes it a little bit annoying. And if you do want to hedge, you have to do two separate accounts. Then you have the abysmally low leverage. And sometimes you can be in like two or three trades and that chews up all of your $100,000 deposit in terms of margin. So it protects you because you're less likely to lose money because you physically can't place trades past a certain amount. But on the other side of the coin, it also prevents you from making like rational trading decisions sometimes because you can't because of the technicalities behind the leverage and everything like that. Um, so yeah, regulated or not, I don't know, that's regulated broker. So what about the degenerate unregulated brokers? Now, you have zero peace of mind since they could literally just disappear with all your money anytime for any reason. There's absolutely nothing you can do. Now, I know what you're probably thinking. Why in good God's green earth, why I ever do something like this? Like, this sounds so stupid. I totally feel you here, but there's some pros, you know, if you can, if you can muster that out. You get really high leverage, so it allows you to deposit literally a microscopic amount, but you can trade with the same sizing you would on a larger account. Like, for example, if you deposited 100K with Forex.com, for example, and you can trade up to whatever sizing you can based on the leverage of their instruments. Um, you can trade a certain amount there with an unregulated, degenerate, offshore, super risky, literally not bring home to mom and dad broker. You could deposit a thousand dollars and trade the same lot size. Now, are you likely to blow the account? Yeah, of course. But, you know, you could do it with a very, very small balance, meaning you don't have to put that big of an initial deposit up. OK, not financial advice, but I'm just saying it's a pro. So you don't really have that much at risk. You're, the money you have at risk is whatever you deposit with them. And you can trade like you normally would on a larger account, but you could just do it with a smaller account with a high leverage. Uh, they're also known for having lower commissions and fees if they're unregulated. Sometimes, like, for example, not a recommendation, but Coinex, for example, C-O-I-N-E-X-X, Coinex.com. It's $2 per standard lot in and out. And a lot of other brokers are similar, like $3 per standard lot in and out. Round trip, you pay $2 per standard lot. So if you did that same five standard lot Euro USD trade we talked about a second ago, be $50 in total commissions. If you did that, with the unregulated broker that has $2 commission per standard lot, you're only paying $10 for five standard lots because it's just $2 per lot. So five times two, $10. That's pretty cheap to trade. It's really not that big of a deal. So low commissions and fees, their fee structures are generally lower. You also get smaller spreads. I know you boys and girls like them really tight spreads, those squeaky clean spreads where sometimes it's like half a pip or something. A lot of these degenerate unregulated brokers will give you those smaller spreads. Um, and you can also do crypto deposits and withdrawals. So that, I mean, that's a pro or a con, depending on how you look at it. And there's also no FIFO or anti-hedging stuff. There's no, there's none of that. You, you can hedge with brokers. There's no FIFO. You can enter a position and that's your position. And if you want to close that position, you can close that position. It's very, very simple. So that's, you know, one of the pros why a lot of people like it. So, um, like, like AKA you can actually trade normally because all of this stuff exists here. You don't have to worry about a lot of the side stuff, like, um, all the regulations and all this and that the degenerate offshore unregulated brokers. You don't have to worry about any of that. Some examples of brokers are below some of these brokers that I've used personally over the course of my past seven years trading are Coinex, Hanko trade and Nash markets, traders way, Hugo's way, Vantage VT markets. And in some cases I've never used these brokers, but I know that people who do, they use IC markets, Pepperstone and black bull markets. There's also some pretty good regulated brokers in Australia and New Zealand, some other ones as well. Um, but yeah, so these are some brokers there. Just for example, you could, you could trade with them, not a recommendation. I'm not suggesting any broker and I'm not affiliated with any broker. I don't do any of that crap. I don't do any like IB partnerships, promoting brokers. I only promote my products at mission FX. So mission FX trading.com. That's all me. I don't do anything else. I don't take any type of affiliate crap or any garbage like that. Cause you, you truly can't trust any broker because all of them are there to just take your money. So if you live in the USA, how the hell are you going to get around this? Now you're going to have to use a regulated broker. <laughs> I'm just kidding. You don't have to, if you don't want to, or you can just use an offshore unregulated degenerate broker that allows high one to 500 leverage and the ability for you to hedge. You just have to accept that they can literally walk away and disappear. Now I've, I've never had that happen ever with all the brokers I've used since I've been trading since 2016. We're going on what, like seven years now. I've never had that happen to me. Like the, the sketchiest thing that ever happened was one time I submitted a withdrawal from a broker. It was, it was an offshore broker. I'm not going to say which one it is. I don't want them to, to see this video and be like, Oh shit. But it was in 2018, the beginning of the year, I submitted a withdrawal and it took like three weeks and they didn't respond. And I was super sketched out. Fortunately, it was a small account, but then they, they emailed me three weeks later saying, Hey, sorry, we had our website down due to server issues. We were restructuring some things. Your withdrawal is cleared and they withdrew my money and it was fine. 
So aside from that, I've never had an issue. Now you can do some basic research with whatever brokers that you go to look at, and you can chat with the brokers' chat supports on their websites. And if you, you can ask if you can trade with them after explaining your situation and how it would work, et cetera. So if you go to them and you say, hey, I'm living in Europe, you know, Germany, for example, can I trade with you? What are the, what are the ins and outs? How does it work? How do I fund? What's the leverage, blah, blah, blah. You can chat with them and they'll help you. A lot of brokers have chat support on the website. Don't be afraid to click that live chat button. You know, you gotta step up to the plate sometimes in life. You gotta have conversations with people if you want some answers. Now, if you don't live in the USA, do whatever the hell you want. I, I just, I live here in the USA. I'm here in Texas. It's a pretty decent place to live. A lot of taxes. But if you live outside the US, just do whatever you want. A lot, you have a lot more, uh, you have a lot less restrictions if you live outside the US, but you still follow the same process to kind of go and find a broker. Now, the platforms compatible with brokers. There are hundreds of platforms. However, TradingView and MetaTrader 5 are the most common platforms. These are the most popular and widely used platforms. People still use MetaTrader 4 as well. Um, I like MetaTrader 5. It's just a little bit newer, a little bit updated, a little bit more you know, a little bit more sexy. You know, you could drag your TP and stop loss and put pending hedge orders real easy from the chart. You can see all your orders there. I like it. It's really cool, but you know, you're free to use whatever you want. Now, remember, a broker is the company that's facilitating your trades. And the platform is the software, the app that interfaces with your broker so that you can actually physically place the trades. For example, it'd be like if you opened an account with example, Hugo's way, for example, that is your broker. TradingView or MetaTrader 5 is the platform that you would use to place trades. And that, that platform interfaces with your broker. So you essentially say you download MetaTrader 5 on your phone or on your computer or something. You would then log into your brokerage account from the platform, MetaTrader 5, to place the trades. And the platform works with it, sends it to your broker and your broker fills the trade for you. And hopefully you make a profit. So that's how that works. So some examples, I've just showed you that. So brokerage account types, this is a really overly simplified brokerage account types. You have VAR, which um, sometimes the people call this like value at risk, but it's not. And Forex brokerage is typically just shortened form of saying variable. It's just a shortened, like denot denotated thing that says variable. And what this means is VAR is essentially where your broker says, hey bro, in most cases, we're not gonna charge you commissions. So you don't have to pay commissions per trade, but your spreads are gonna be a little bit wider than average. So if you're swing trading, a VAR account, variable account, variable spread works fine if you're swing trading, like teared in like one hour, four hour daily. You're typically not going to have too many issues with that. Um, it, will, it probably won't work that well if you're scalping. You're going to get into a trade trying to go to five pips, but your spread is five pips. So you're instantly screwed. So you have to catch 10 pips just to get five pips. You have to catch five pips just to break even. Not fun. Anyway, if you are using an ECN STP account, so this is called the Electronic Communications Network. It's sometimes people denote this as their STP. So it means the straight through processing. It means where they where they say they send your order straight to the market. So there's like, you put an order in, so you place a buy on your USD, and the broker sends it straight to the market. So they send it to the interbank, and the interbank bounces all these orders around, and everybody facilitates trades, and the value of the currencies go up and down depending on everyone who's buying or selling and the fair value of it. Bunch of stuff that you don't need to know about. The point of this is that on an ECN account, ECN slash STP account, you're typically going to pay a commission, however much that may be, $2 per standard lot, $3, $5 per standard lot, or if you're, and, or if you're with Oanda or Forex.com, $10 per standard lot in and out. But you're going to pay a small fee, small, haha, you're going to pay a fee. And then on top of that, you're going to have a, a spread, but it's typically a lot smaller. ECN STP accounts are good if you're scalping. So if you're scalping an ECN STP account is pretty good. There's also standard accounts, which some brokers will have a standard account. You'll have to go and look because different brokers call standard accounts different things. Sometimes they do a little bit of stuff on the back end to make it like all, I, I like it's a, it's, it's, you'll have to go look it up because some brokers you'll see there's like, oh, there's EC and there's variable and there's standard. What's that? For each broker, it's different. Go and look at what the details are with that and chat with the broker if you have a question. I'm not a broker. I've never been a broker. I don't understand any of this stuff except for like placing buy and sell trades and hoping that it works out. So there's also custom the, cu brokers will sometimes, if you have enough capital or if you know them really well and have a good relationship, they'll create custom accounts for you that have custom specs. So imagine a brokerage where you had a zero pip spread, zero dollar commission and the broker just gave you profitable trades for free. It'd be the ideal situation. In most cases, that won't be the case, but you can get custom accounts made for you depending on like you know, specific pricing if you trade a certain amount of volume with them. 
Now, here's the effery on the back end of unregulated brokers that you should know about. Sometimes brokers will straight up not even send your orders to market. This means that they will either, they will tell you that the account that you made is a live account and it'll look like it's a live account and it'll say real, it'll say live, but sometimes brokers, it'll actually be a demo account and they won't actually send your, your orders to market. It'll essentially be like you're trading a demo account. And what they're betting on is they're betting you're going to lose money because most people, like I said at the beginning of this YouTube video, is that you're going to lose money. You're probably going to fail. So you probably shouldn't trade. Still, you should probably turn off this video. I don't even know why you're still watching this video. But since brokers know that most people are going to lose money, it's a good business for unregulated degenerate offshore brokers who have no regulatory oversight and authorities after them to just not even fill your orders and to just take your deposit of whatever, $5,000, and then just pocket it. They just keep it in their accounts and they retain it as an asset and they give you an account that is just essentially a demo account, but it looks like it's a live account from your end. That way you feel like you're trading a live account and they'll just pocket your deposit anticipating that you're going to lose money. <laughs> Since most people lose money, it works out great for them. The one or two people out of like every 50 who would make money, whatever it is, I don't know exactly what it is. Some people say 70% lose money. Some people say 90% lose money. I don't know what the metrics are. It depends on how you define it. But most people, in fact, do lose money trading. So since brokers know this, they know most people are going to lose money. They can just pocket the deposits and not send your orders to market and everything's going to be fine for them. A few people who make profits, <laughs> here's what happens to them. Now, there's B booking and A booking, and there's also something called Nick booking. I'm just kidding. There's no such thing called Nick booking. It's just B booking and A booking is typically what it's turned. So B booking is essentially when a broker does what I told you. It's like they will put you on a different category of traders within their organization in which your account is essentially a demo account. And with that demo account, they will, I'm having a bunch of trades go into a lot of profit right now. So that's why I'm over here uh, having some fun. Anyway, so they'll B book you and they will take your trades and they will just straight up not send it to, to market and then they'll pocket your deposits and everything, pretty much the screwery we just talked about a second ago. Now, A booking is when brokers will ideally send your orders to the actual market. They'll do STP, they'll send it straight through processing to the market, to the actual interbank, and then if you make money, they actually have the money to pay you because it came from the market, it didn't come from their pockets. It, you've made the money in the markets, they just facilitated the trade and they profited by pay, you paying them commissions to facilitate that trade. If you're a profitable trader and you and you trade profitably for like a couple of weeks, couple of months with a broker, if they have a risk desk, there is no way in hell they're just going to let you sit on B book because it's going to be costing them money to pay you out every time you withdraw. So a good idea is that if you're going to be trading with a broker and you go to a broker for the first time, when you fund a live account, trade profitably on it, meaning trade on a demo account until you are profitable and then trade on a small account. And then if you can still do that profitably and do that for an extended period of time, usually a couple of weeks to a couple of months, most brokers aren't going to keep you B booked because it's not worth it for them. It's they, they would rather keep you A booked so that way they don't have to pay you out of their pocket. So very simple. B booking is when they're literally keeping your deposits, giving you a demo account, saying it's live and praying that you lose money so they can keep your deposit because it's more worth it for them to just keep $5,000 that you deposit instead of, you know, the whatever it would have been, 50 to $100 commission on all the trades that you take and then you lost your account. It's more profitable for them to B book you if they know you're going to lose money. If you demonstrate that you are making money and the broker does have a risk desk, which a lot of them do, even if they're degenerate, then they're going to a book you because they don't want to have to pay you out or they'll copy trade you, which, you know, they could do whatever the hell they want. They're unregulated. So there's B booking and a booking. Now there's also another thing they can put up a fight when it comes to withdrawal. If you are in fact B booked and you were trading like as a losing trader for six months and you had lost like 50 grand and then all of a sudden you take one account from 50 K to hundred K out of nowhere, just you do it in like one week and the broker's like, Whoa, what the hell? What they might do is they might send you a long email back saying, hey, we flagged your account for anti-money laundering. We flagged it for fraud. They're, they're going to tell you like all this crap it's to essentially try to like not pay you out. They're going to say you broke some rules with their brokerage. They're going to pull out the fine print and all this BS to try to say like, hey, you know, we can't give you a withdrawal. We have to nullify some trades, this and that. There wasn't the case and you did, did something wrong, blah, blah, blah. So this is what I'm saying. Like if you're trade, if you're losing money for months and months on a broker, you are probably B booked if it's a offshore broker. So you cannot just trade like shit and then trade profitably for one week and make a ton of money real quick and then expect that they're just going to give you a withdrawal. No questions asked. Sometimes they will, but I'm just saying like you should be aware of this. 
Make sure you're trading profitably. Start with small balances and for F sake, start on a demo account. Do that for like three months, six months, a year until you are consistently profitable in demo. Then transition to live on a small account. Not financial advice, not a recommendation, but it just it's the common sense thing to do. So with that being said, the brokers can also just straight up disappear. Just like I talked about at the beginning of this video. They can literally just vanish their website will go down like a lot of the exchanges that went under the crypto exchanges nothing in forex recently that i can remember but a lot of the crypto exchanges just straight up disappeared ftx disaster a bunch of crazy stuff where they just disappear with everyone's money and you try to withdraw and they're like nope f you or they just don't even say f you they, you just don't get a response because you email them but their emails don't work anymore because they disbanded their website and email addresses that's never happened to me, but that can happen. So just be aware of it. You also get weird order and execution issues sometimes. Sometimes the spreads will widen up and gap out like crazy. You'll have gaps painted on the market that'll show in your terminal. The price is way down here and you'll screenshot it. But then you'll go to TradingView or a different brokerage and they'll show that that gap never happened. This doesn't happen to me very often. I use a couple of degenerate re unregulated offshore brokers and I've been fine like 99% of the time. Every now and then something weird might happen, but it's not been enough to impact my trading in a significant way. Most of these brokers I go and I've been trading profitably with them for years. And so they know me and they know that they generally keep me a book, I, I would assume, because they have money to pay me out. And it's and everything's fine as long as you are trading profitably. But keep in mind, you can run into some weird stuff sometimes as far as spreads and stuff. Just keep keep it all, keep it all, you know, chill. Just chill out about it because it happens. One thing is at 4 p.m. Central Standard Time here in Texas, it is where the Asian session rolls over from New York session to Asian session. At those times, all broker spreads will widen out like crazy. There'll be weird gaps sometimes, small gaps. It's really weird. So around that time for about an hour from 4 p.m. CST, currently where I'm living, to 5 p.m. CST, the spreads are really wide and weird. That's fine. That happens with all brokers, even regulated ones. It's all good. 4 p.m. Central Standard Time. Convert that to your time zone. Right now, that with daylight savings time or whatever, that's when uh, that's when the interchange occurs. There's also about 69 million other random things that will happen um, with unregulated brokers that can happen. So with that being said, what should you do? Let's see. It's a very, very simple thing. Go to Google, look up some reviews and talk to a few broker support teams and then experiment with brokers. Go open an account with them, not a live account, but a demo account. Test them out for a couple of weeks, a couple of months. Then whenever you're ready, you can go and you can fund them. Funding them, it, you could sometimes you can do ACH or credit card. Sometimes you'll have to do something like, like crypto. You'll have to purchase cryptocurrency on a website like Coinbase or on a different exchange that'll allow you to buy cryptocurrency with uh, fiat cash. And then you'll have to send that cryptocurrency that you purchased to your broker. Then you trade profitably. And then you will then withdraw it back to your crypto exchange and then sell that crypto back to US dollars or GBP or whatever it is you live in the world. And then you can then withdraw it from there back to your bank account to be able to pay your taxes, which is a whole nother thing. I'm not a tax advisor. I don't want to get into legal issues trying to give tax advice. My best advice as far as taxes, my best non-financial and non-tax and non-legal advice, advice is to just get a CPA it's that simple like if you're making like even 10 grand a year just get a cpa it's not it's not that big of a deal all right that's everything i got for you guys today about forex brokers if you got any questions drop them in the comments um if if you see a question in the comments that i did not answer here in this video that's very like that you think i should probably answer a bunch of you guys go and like those comments and i'll respond to the top comments that get the most likes that way i kind of know what's important what most people want to know and I can kind of clarify stuff. I'm going to be checking the comments on this video once every month or two. Because um, if you're seeing this video two years from now, you know, there may be some stuff that's changed in the world. We all may be dead because it's World War Three. you know, God forbid. And so just put your questions in the comments and the ones that get the most likes and upvotes, I'll, uh, I'll respond to them, most of them, in most cases, generally. So drop your questions in the comments. Let me know. Uh, I have a YouTube channel here if you want to learn trading about other stuff, but you don't have to subscribe. You don't have to like this video. You do whatever the hell you want. I hope this video was helpful and I'll see you in the next one. Cheers.